Yeah, I want to say I've been to 35 countries now, and probably 20 of those have been points and miles. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Pay Me and Plane Tickets podcast. I'm your host, Jelani. Today, we talk with Scott LeRae, who's a champion traveler. He has visited all parts of the world, from his time in the Air Force and through his time as his father. Scott lives out of bounds, but never out of budget. He preaches travel and investing, guiding others on how to live and see the world and invest a dollar. Today, we hear a story. Give us a little bit of background. Where do you hail from? Okay, I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. Um, you know, I spent the first 21 years of my life there and I uh, joined the U.S. Air Force out of there. So since then, I've been traveling all around uh, on active duty and, uh, you know, from all over since then. Okay. So you're, so you're, a, are you a LeBron fan? <laughs> I am a LeBron fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no 2016 was a great it was a great year i was, oh, I was very, unbelievable i was very into it <laughs> us new yorkers were supporting you we're, we're supporting okay you guys heavily um okay so you actually were in the air force so you get to travel you know, i guess quite a, like for work um not really uh they so you know long story short uh they sent me to england in 2011 to work in one of the hospitals i'm a mental health counselor Okay, and uh, that was my first time ever leaving the states. So, oh wow! How old are you? Uh, then I was twenty nine. Oh, okay, so yeah, I was, I was first time out of the states. Never had thought about getting a passport until then. <laughs> <laughs> and how long were you stationed out there? I was stationed there from two thousand eleven to two thousand fifteen. Oh man, that's quite a time. Yeah, yeah, four long years. It was it was one of the funnest memories uh, <laughs> of my life. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. You know, I got to see England, and during that four years, I think I visited eleven other countries uh, throughout Europe, and uh, that's where my whole traveling bug journey started. began. I see. That's where the whole travel bug sort of started for you. It did. Okay, and life in on a were you on base or were you just sort of within the common people? So I lived uh, in a village right outside of base, maybe 15 minute drive. Right, right. Maybe 45 minutes from London. Oh, nice. Is it as true as what they say? It rains all the time? All the time. <laughs> if it, and if it's not raining, it's overcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you mentioned you were able to sort of traverse through uh, 11 different countries while you were there. Was it all through just the, the rail system or how are you getting about? So they have two low cost carriers called Ryanair and EasyJet. So, you know, we would, you know, four or five days, get on a plane, spend maybe a hundred bucks round trip to Madrid, 80 bucks round trip to Sweden, 160 round trip to Rome. So it's kind of easy to get around. We would drive to places like France, Belgium, Amsterdam. Um, but you know, all kinds of ways, never took a rail though. Those prices uh, that you just mentioned sound beautiful. So, <laughs> um, I, I, I envy that. Okay. So which country did you see? Uh, while there, um, I visited, uh, my first solo trip was there. That was Porto, Portugal. I also got to go to uh, Spain, Sweden, uh, like I said, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Albania, Greece. Yeah. So I got, got, got around a lot uh, during those four years. And you said the first solo trip was Portugal. So I'm assuming Lisbon. Uh, Porto. Oh, Porto. Oh, okay. Got you. Okay. Porto, Porto. Okay. Got yeah, you. They, they only had like 60 buck round trip tickets. So you know, <laughs> I didn't know anything about points and miles then. So I was paying cash. <laughs> Understand. And um, so you uh, that was your first solo trip. So my question was leading to did you what were all those solo trips or were you also kind of with uh friends and or maybe even just family if they're out there so now my kids are older so during that time it was with uh my children ex-wife uh sometimes with friends but uh, uh you know mostly those three wow that's 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 even much uh much more impressive to travel with uh with family most don't even get to do that yeah yeah it was yeah. a good times you were um Based in England, I mean, sorry, in Europe for 
the four years from 2011 to 2015, I think you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Then did the Air Force move you around to other countries or was it back to the States? So that was the only country they moved me to after that, back to the States, uh, where I was <laughs> oh, stationed man. in uh, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. And so uh, your love for travel came from, I guess your first love for travel started around in the Europe, but they bring you back to the States and then you start traveling on your own again, or was there some sort of assistance in that? Yes, I started traveling on my own. So I got, got like I said, to Arizona and then, uh, you know, I was stationed in England with some people from Colombia. So they told me when I get back, I, I have to try Colombia. So I did. Okay. And uh, that's when I quickly realized the prices aren't the same traveling <laughs> from the States to another country versus, you know, yeah. on another continent traveling within. Yes. Yes. Very true. Uh, where in Colombia did, did you visit? I went to Bogota. Ah, yeah. I've been meaning to go. I've been meaning to go. I've been to Cartagena, but okay. I've been meaning to go to, I've been told that Medellin is beautiful and, and Bogota is uh, wonderful as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, what other country, and was that solo? Uh, that was solo. Almost all the trips after Europe were solo. Wow. So, okay. So you're, you're actually the true definition of a solo traveler. <laughs> uh, uh, that second half of my solo or my travel career, definitely. Yes, yes. Do you enjoy it? Uh, I do. I do. You know, I've noticed when traveling with other people, whether it be family, friends, you're kind of on the group's schedule. That's when right. you travel alone, you know, you can wake up whenever you want to wake up, go to bed whenever you want to go to bed, uh, go places on a whim that weren't on the agenda, at, you know, when planning the trip. And uh, you just have more freedom when traveling alone. Yeah. That's very true. And you also, you get to learn more about yourself when you're traveling solo. You kind of got to experience life on your own. Definitely. I, I learned more about myself through traveling than any other way throughout life. That's beautiful. Um, how long have you been in Arizona? Uh, not in Arizona net, net currently. So uh, 2015, they sent me to Arizona and I was in Arizona from 2015 to 2021. And throughout that time, uh, since I was in Southern U.S., if you will, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's when I did most of Central and South America throughout those five years. Oh, wow. Which parts did you visit? Um, I did Colombia, um, Ecuador, Brazil, Chile, uh, Panama. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something else. And then Costa Rica uh, and a few others uh, during that time. Any Any standouts? Uh, probably Rio, you know, that Copacabana oh. beach is addictive. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a lot of time on the, on the Rio beaches. Of course. Yes. I, I love the surf. And so, uh, Brazil is definitely a top spot to go to. Okay. <laughs> but I have not made, made my way out there yet, but you're giving me the uh, inspiration to. Oh yeah. It's great. <laughs> okay. So you have visited central and South America. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ventured off into maybe Eastern Asia or even Africa? Uh, so currently going through Africa. So the last couple years of my time in Arizona, I uh, visited my first country in Africa, which was South Africa. Yes. Um, and fell in love with Africa. And I, I pretty much been going uh, throughout Africa since 2018. So did Europe, did Central South America. Now I'm traveling throughout throughout Africa. Yeah, South Africa, I love it. It's one of the it's it's one of the uh I say it's it's kind of like a bit of San Diego in Africa with the with the African taste on it. Definitely. I want to say South Africa is one of two countries I've I've only visited twice. Every every other country just one time. Definitely. South Africa is worth that second trip. Um I just got parts? back about three weeks ago. Yeah, I noticed it. Yeah, I noticed some of the spots here. I was like, oh, I've seen this before. I've seen this. It's beautiful. <laughs> How long were you out there for? Uh, this time, two weeks. I did a week in Johannesburg and a week in Cape Town. Which one do you prefer? Mm, I like the Johannesburg nightlife, but as far <laughs> as daytime activities, I prefer Cape Town. That's okay. I could see that. Yeah, Johannesburg is definitely much more of a nightlife area, and then Cape Town kind of humbles you and gives you kind of a smooth soul. Yeah, I got that Table Mountain view. Oh, Camp exactly. <laughs> Camps Bay, uh, mm -hmm. and then um, my my favorite part was the 
oh man the what's the it's it's a uh, cape it's uh, the cape of hope okay oh, uh, okay yeah, another favorite cape of hope yeah um so okay uh what other parts of africa have you been sort of seeing and uh, enjoying okay so uh southern africa uh like i mentioned south africa botswana right. namibia zambia mozambique uh, angola uh, okay east africa <laughs> i've been to tanzania uganda rwanda mm. and uh west africa uh benin togo ghana ivory coast uh sierra leone mm. uh, and i think that's about it and i was gonna ask which one of those uh would you recommend but let's start off with the south so you said namibia botswana uh, angola zambia mozambique angola. Which south ones africa. outside of south africa would you recommend for somebody to go visit oh they all have different things uh that i love about it but if i had to recommend one mm -hmm. i would probably say uh maybe maybe namibia and or botswana or maybe actually zambia or botswana because they're english-speaking countries angola and mozambique they speak portuguese uh, so it's a little bit diff, uh, more of a challenge to get around uh, if you're from the U.S. and only speak English. Say the two. Say, say the two countries again. Angola and Mozambique. Angola and Mozambique. All right. So I will be adding that to my list because I'm mm -hmm. looking to to because I will, I will be going back to South uh, to Southern Africa. Okay. Um, I'll start off in back in Cape Town again for some surfing, and then uh, I do want to at least shuttle plane it to one of these other countries and explore that too. So definitely uh, inspirational so you also visited um western africa uh mm -hmm. <laughs> ghana's the hot spot everybody talks about ghana are you on the same train oh uh, yeah i loved ghana it was it was amazing it was um you know everything that everybody hyped it up to be so i, mm. I very much enjoyed it <laughs> it wasn't my favorite but it, it's definitely up there and which one was your what, uh, favorite western african country my favorite was probably sierra leone Okay, why is that? Uh, the, just the atmosphere. You know, they have a uh, beautiful coastline, beach bars and restaurants, mm. you know, are, are great there. Uh, and it's just very chill, you know, to get around probably a dollar. You can get on the uh, motor taxi and, you know, just, just very relaxed and chill, chill country. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it in. It, it, it kind of fits into the... Um... You know, Western Africa has been going through sort of the re-educating of the diaspora. So mm -hmm. it's, and I can see it being very important to go try out Sierra Leone. And uh, I'll, I'll even add Benin to there. Yeah, Benin was, Benin was probably the most beautiful out of all of those Western Africa countries. Easy. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm already encouraged. I'm already sold on the <laughs> ticket. I just got to figure out what dates are going to work. <laughs> Palm trees <laughs> everywhere. Can't beat it. Um, did you, did you mention anything for Eastern Africa? East Africa, I visited Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda. And how was Tanzania? Uh, Tanzania was uh, great. You know, I, uh, I I have to go back because I got sick. I did a three-country trip during my visit to Tanzania, and that was the last country on the list. So I got a, a quite a bit sick. So I spent most of the time uh, at the hotel, by the pool, just trying to fight it. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Yeah. So now you have another reason to go back. <laughs> uh, I already plan on going in August. First week of August. <laughs> oh, the tent's already booked. As long as the flight's booked, everything else will get worked out. Facts. <laughs> um, have you ever visited uh, any Asian countries? No, no. So I, I retired from the military this year and I plan on doing a big Asian trip uh, next year. Uh, you, I guess you haven't laid it out yet, but it's in the works. Definitely. Definitely. Congrats on the retirement, by the way. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, I I I discovered you through uh your knowledge on points and your knowledge on particular cards, best travel cards, best way to sort of maximize your spending. Um, what inspired your your creation of that YouTube channel, Travel and Invest? Because I would say I agree with that whole ideology. Okay, so yeah, I was um, you know, when I came back from Europe to Arizona. Uh, like I mentioned, 
the tickets were much more expensive flying from the U.S. to another country. So I started looking for ways to save money on travel and I ran across, you know, different credit card points and miles systems and also found out that the credit card companies waive the annual fee for active duty military. So I started digging into that more and more and uh, took my first trip to Panama using points and miles and uh, you know, I found other YouTubers in the space and noticed that it wasn't a wasn't a very big space like it is now. And, uh, you know, my one of my co-workers recommended that I start a YouTube channel because so many people in my life were asking me questions. So they said, start a YouTube channel, and just send them the link. And uh, okay. that's what I did. And I've, I've been doing it ever since. No, it's very helpful. I mean, it, it is a very um, convoluted and, and complicated market to 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 sort of be in you know there's thousands different options and there's a you can get trapped in certain systems and uh it's always good to have a guide <laughs> to sort of guiding you through like what suits you best or your suits your lifestyle best uh um, definitely <laughs> so i mean so you got so you yourself got into the points game post uh europe correct so you you were kind of uh you were a user and an educator at the same time simultaneously oh so you're learning and teaching <laughs> making a <laughs> blind leading the blind <laughs> and um so you mentioned that uh, you did use points for your panama trip did all of the most of your other travels were they also sort of sub subsidized with points or yeah i want to say i've been to 35 countries now and probably 20 of those have been points and miles so Feed us, feed us some, uh, some insights. Which, which, um, which bank uh, are you are you very fond of when it comes to accumulating points? Well, I personally like uh, Chase, uh, probably the best, just because one of their most popular cars, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, uh, it's just easy to use their points. You know, they have you get fifty percent more value with your points on their travel portal. Okay. Uh, you know, with that car, you get a $300 uh, travel credit every year. Uh, they have great transfer partners such as United, which is who I fly to Africa with the most. Um, and also great transfer partners like Hyatt, uh, who can you can get a lot of value out of your points uh, through Hyatt. OK, so Chase is the winner with my travel lifestyle. Definitely. No, and I, I agree with that. Um you know, being in New York, United is a big player here as well. Uh, but also what I've learned in my own travels is I used to have an Amex card, but you couldn't really use Amex outside of, uh, I'd say America, honestly. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, it was very important for me to move to a Visa or a MasterCard to kind of be able to have that flexibility outside of the Americas. Yeah, definitely. I, I use my Capital One Venture, which is a visa just about everywhere because you get double points on everything. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been to a place that does not accept visa as of yet. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a good, uh, yeah, that's the best part. I mean, Amex has, you know, it has the prestige, but not the flexibility. Yeah, definitely. They have the uh, most transfer partners, though, which can be a huge benefit uh, if you're mostly spending money here in the States. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Um. So you mentioned Capital One. I think they're they're kind of a new player because it used to be just Chase and Amex. Would you agree Def with that? Definitely. They uh they have made a lot of uh, many strides since you know when I first started. Uh, they've picked up a bunch of other transfer partners, mm -hmm. uh, introduced a premium car, the Capital One Venture X, uh, which is a great car. And um, yeah, they're definitely uh you know fighting for that 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 top <laughs> three spots right now. My eyeball has been on them for a minute. Like, oh, you know, maybe one day I'll, if, if you know, they they keep on the right, you know, this right uh, path. I might, I might jump in. But oh um, yeah, I love Capital One. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, so I'm. I used to be a, uh, into the points, but it was very confusing. So I kind of, you know, uh, left that life. And uh, I just went strictly with cash back. So what are your thoughts on a guy like me who's like, hey, you know, just give me the cash. You know, I'll. I don't, I don't really care for the points if I'm a, if I even even though I do love to travel. Uh, I mean, 
I would say uh, it, it all depends on the individual. If you're somebody who doesn't travel often, cash back can be very beneficial because it's more versatile. You can take that cash back and use it any way you want for the most part, or whether that be statement credits towards a credit card bill, cash back that you can take that cash and pay for flights in that that way. Or, you know, it's very uh, diverse cash back. Uh, but for somebody like me who travels a lot, you know, I, I need I need that the those discounts on flights. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. No, uh, you're so right. You're so right. Um, my thinking was, you know, with the cashback is I have the um, fidelity card, and so I get cashback on my spending. It goes into, you know, whatever brokerage account it hits. Um, and gets reinvested. So uh, my thinking is, well, I'm traveling, I'm getting some cash back off my travel and I'm investing it. So I'm kind of like maybe the living embodiment of travel and invest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's why I always just, that's how I justify the cash back. But I do live in a United based area. I've been flying United for years. And so perhaps I should look into the United cards or, uh, or even the Chase uh, Sapphire reserve card you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. The, the United Explorer car is one of my first airline credit cards. That thing saves me so much money, uh, mm -hmm. gives me lounge access. And uh, yeah, because I, like I said, go to Africa so often because United is a partner of Ethiopia Airlines, which is a major gateway in Africa. Uh, it, it saves me a lot. All right. I got it. That, you've convinced me. I'm going to really look into this uh, Chase, this Chase house. And uh, <laughs> definitely see what what Mr. Jamie Diamond can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about the investing side. So uh, your channel is travel and investing. So is the investing strictly on just the cost savings on the travel spending, or is it? Do you also have? Do you share sort of investing advice? Well, my channel got kind of jumbled up. I was talking about too many things in one YouTube channel, which didn't favor the YouTube algorithm. So I had to split the channel up. So the channel that you know as Travel and Invest is now just called Scott LeRae, L-E-R-A-Y. And there now I only talk about strictly uh, credit card points and miles. Uh, however, once I retire, I'll be uh, creating a separate investing channel uh, on YouTube as well. But when I did do investing videos on that channel, I just show people how to look at the fundamentals on company and invest uh, in individual stocks uh, for people who are into that, but showing them how to correctly value a company, looking at things like price to earnings ratios, mm -hmm. price to free cash flow, uh, net income, things of that nature, because a lot of people uh, just invest into companies because of the hype of the company without learning how to dig into right. the financials and seeing what the company is actually worth. Yeah. A lot of times it's, it's based off name brand more than the actual fundamentals. Right. Right. Yeah. I understand. Um, and I think that's very important what you're doing because you're shedding, you're, sh you're sort of shedding this light on um, the, the, the dirt of, of investing. You have to sort of do the dirty work <laughs> and, correct, and not just correct. go up. And nine times out of 10, if you're, investing off of hype you're already behind um, correct it's hype kinda, the, yeah. the, the train has passed <laughs> <laughs> you lost already but i, but I did, left holding yeah. the bag <laughs> exactly and so um you know i i have a uh, i invested in boeing back in 2019 mm -hmm. and then no 2020 the stock crashed and for for all the airlines and hotels i invested in boeing and it Gave me a nice return in about a year or two. I was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good turnout. Um, in your opinion, is there a particular broker house you would recommend? Uh, I would only recommend what I use. I, I haven't used places like F Fidelity. I currently use Charles Schwab and they are great. You know, customer yeah. services, top notch. Uh, the app is easy to use, smooth uh, when it comes to taxes. You know, I get my stuff right on time every time, no issues. So, I uh, I enjoy them. Okay, with the investing side, a lot of people in the market are nervous. They're very mm -hmm. nervous with uh, sort of what's happening with the economy and and the Fed interest rates are going up and inflation. 
would you still advise people to just sort of cash hoard or say, hey, you know, look at the right company, do the research, do the, you know, sort of the, the you know, uh, the analysis um, and go for it? Uh, I, I'm a, you know, I invest in any type of market, up markets, down markets. Uh, and that's the importance of value in a company properly and investing in the company based off of fundamentals versus hype. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing to be afraid of if a company that you are thinking about investing in stock price is going down. There's nothing wrong with that investing in that company. In fact, that's the best time to invest in a quality company is when the price is down. Uh, you just have to know what you're doing and make sure that you've done the research to see that yes, the stock price has gone down. However, their revenue is going up and up each year. Their net income is going up and up each year. If you know, those things are still happening, but the stock price is going down. It's like getting some Jordans on sale. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a great analogy. Yes. It's, it's definitely like that. Very sound. You mentioned um, that you are divesting your YouTube channel because of the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Has I we we've discussed uh, with a few other YouTubers, sort of their thinking behind the future of YouTube and kind of how their channel is moving and moving forward. Are you feeling that sort of the tide shifting maybe away from YouTube into these other platforms such as um, Instagram or TikTok, or are you still kind of like my content is best on YouTube? Uh, personally, my content is best on youtube as far as from a business standpoint because nobody's going to pay you going to pay you out like youtube does uh, anytime soon anyway yeah. uh, and uh you know people who like youtube uh, youtube is more of long form content uh it's getting into short form content but uh that has its place you know yeah um, i watch short form content on youtube and on other platforms like instagram tiktok but you know, my go to for the news, my go to for entertainment is is definitely long form YouTube video. So uh, I don't think that's going anywhere uh, anytime soon. And I think, you know, if it does uh, as a YouTuber or content creator, you just got to be prepared to pivot. OK, prepared to adapt. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, you mentioned that you're going to be exploring a new YouTube channel that's that solely focuses on investing and a YouTube channel that solely fo focuses on um, the credit card travel market. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thoughts on the credit card travel market? Do you still think it's kind of on the upswing? And I only mention this because um, the new trend of the day is not necessarily credit cards, but everybody has these buy now, pay later options on particular you know, purchases or whatever, which is a, uh, as an analyst, you're seeing it eating up that credit card market. Uh, I think the credit card market isn't going anywhere. I think, uh, or I hope people will just get more smart when it comes to credit card. You know, consumer debt in America is out of control. So that's why I say it's not going anywhere. We just need to start using the banks like they use us. You know, yeah. we take out a loan from a bank um, uh, and they're going to collect interest from us. We put our money in a checking, uh, a checking or savings account. They're going to loan that money out and earn interest on that money. So we just got to learn and have a mindset. Hey, let's stop paying interest. Let's stay out of debt and use them just like they use us. So, you know, get your 5% back on your purchases, your 3% back on your purchases while not giving it all back paying interest. So um, I think we just need to continue to educate ourselves on credit. Um, know yourself because 21 year old Scott uh, having a credit card was not the the way to go. You know, we've all been there. Yep. Right. Right. So <laughs> you, again, you just got to know yourself as well. So I think that market isn't going anywhere. Um, I think the banks are making too much money off of um, people who aren't making good decisions. And, you know, we just, again, like I said, just need to adapt and learn how to use the banks. Yeah. You know, you're very wise in that. Yes. It's very true. Um, when you travel outside of America, they don't really use credit cards. A lot of it is pretty much cash or debit card based. Uh, I don't want to keep you on too long. Um, and we like to end off with these pay me and plane tickets, pay me and plane tickets, a uh, patented question. So, uh, it's seven questions. Give us your first fresh answer and a little bit of reasoning why. So okay. your favorite airline. 
Uh, favorite airline is United. Again, many options uh, traveling to and from Africa. Yeah, I love United. Glad to have another United baby here. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, Delta has been the the winner. Uh, mm. Even though I, my uh, thoughts, I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing the big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your okay? We didn't answer. What's your go to credit card or debit card? Go to credit card, Chase Sapphire Reserve, definitely. And thought on that. Are you a fan of annual fee or no annual fee? Because I know this reserve has an annual fee. But uh, again, your- right right now, since I'm active duty, I don't pay an annual fee. But like I said, I'm retiring this year and will have to start paying. <laughs> uh, but I, I will pay the annual fee as long as I'm getting outsized value from the car, the perks on the car, airport lounge, travel credit, uh, return on spend, things of that nature. As long as I'm getting outside value, I don't mind paying an annual fee. Fair enough. Uh, all right. I'm I'm kind of on the no annual fee side nowadays, but maybe I'll I'll upgrade one day. <laughs> um, do you have a traveling pet peeve? Uh, pet peeve? Uh, as far as as what? So, exactly. um, for me, I'll take take myself as an example. I don't like paying anything with cash. So for the most part, I'm a card only guy. Uh, we've had one other guest mention that they don't like when the plane lands and everybody gets up. They're like, why can't everybody just sit down? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That that probably would be my pet peeve. I mean, although throughout the years, that is changing. Before uh-huh. every flight I would ever get on, everybody stands up. Now, I think people are starting to get the message, and I, probably because of social media. <laughs> so that's, that's happening less and less uh, the, the more I travel. Oh, okay. So yours is definitely the, everybody standing up as, as fast as they can. I can't stand it. <laughs> I don't know why it irritates me too. It doesn't affect me, but. Yeah. I, you know, it never bothered me until somebody mentioned it. I was like, you know, I never thought about it. I just kind of, you know, mosey along. <laughs> right. Um, are you a window aisle or dare I say a middle seat individual? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm six, one, two, two forty. So. Uh, I definitely need that aisle seat for more shoulder room. I'm an aisle guy here too. Not the same size, but I'm an aisle guy. I just like it. <laughs> it's like the freedom. <laughs> uh, when you travel, are you going to an Airbnb or a hotel? 100% hotel. Oh, okay. So I'll there's only no because... Airbnb. Yeah, so I have a second channel. Um, I told you I broke up the channel where I only talk about travel city tours, hotel reviews, things of that nature. So I'm either paying for my hotel with points. I'm making deals with the hotel to do a hotel review so that they'll put me in the hotel for free. Uh, so I'm 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 leaning more towards hotels just because it's it's free regardless. I see what you're saying. So it's better it's better operationally for you to be at a hotel. Yeah. Correct, correct. Got you. Uh, okay, so let's say you weren't doing the channel. Would you give Airbnb uh, Airbnb a shot? So most most of my time throughout Europe, uh, when I first started traveling, it was mostly Airbnb. And I think that is better if if it's not just you. You know, if you're traveling oh, okay. with a group of people, uh, Airbnb can save you a, a lot of money, have a better experience. But as a solo travel a traveler, I definitely prefer hotels. All right. Fair enough. Uh, when you travel, are you a carry on or a check bag? Uh, both. Both. I usually carry my electronics, like cameras, laptops, things of that nature, on the plane with me, and I check everything else. <laughs> okay. Um, is is it like a certain uh duration of the trip in which it's like okay, everything's just a check bag since I'm there for a longer time, or if it's short enough, say you know maybe a couple of days, you'll do carry on. Yeah, if this is a few days, definitely carry on. But uh, I haven't went on a trip that was just a few days probably since I start traveling internationally. Alrighty. It's usually okay. a week, weeks at a time. Okay, we got you. Yeah, that makes sense too. Um, if you were to travel somewhere, are you choosing a city, beach, or maybe a mountainous area? Ooh, for the most part, I'm a city guy. You know, I love uh, going to restaurants, bars, meeting the locals, and I find that that's easier to do in in big cities. I love the beach. Don't get it twisted, but Mm -hmm. uh, probably seven times out of ten, I'm choosing the big city. Fair Uh, enough. This is is why Bogota was was, uh, on the list. (laughs) Well, that that was only on the list because my supervisor was from Bogota. (laughs) 
So they, they they were the ones that was like, hey, when you get back there, they got cheap tickets out of Arizona. You should try it. All right. Yeah. You're yeah. You're a lot closer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the this is the tough one. So if you had to travel to one location for the rest of your life, which uh, which place are you going to? Mm, one. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably Cape Town. Cape Town. Okay. Probably Cape Town. Great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually thinking about moving there probably in the next three years. Great minds think alike, man. <laughs> I'm probably going to see you out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Look me up. Okay, so Cape Town's your spot. Yeah, no, and I love that they, you know, they now have the the, the uh, direct flights from, uh, at least from New York. Uh, definitely. Uh, but, yeah. but I also like, I like Madrid, Spain. I like Freetown, Sierra Leone. I like Rio, Brazil. So, but Cape Town, if I had to pick one, Probably Cape Town. Okay. Cape Town it is. I like that answer. Yeah, they got a, <laughs> that vibe out there is like great. It's perfect. It the is. weather's great. Uh, you know, yeah, the weather's great. The people are great. The food's great. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not complaining about. Yeah. Um, and the history, you know, excusing excusing the apartheid, uh, you have a very rich history there. They do. They do. That that Zulu culture is like beautiful to watch. It is. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, Scott, this was wonderful to have you on. Uh, I'm so glad you're able to jump on and, and spend a few minutes just sort of shedding light on, on sort of your, your background, your travel history and sort of the future of where you and the channel are going. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Um, okay. Can I, can I, uh, give a, give a, a shout out to my YouTube channel so people know yeah. where to follow me? Give your shout out. Give your shout out. Oh, I've okay. been there for you. So for uh, my credit card points and miles content, if you want to learn more about that, uh, you can follow me at Scott Leray. That's L-E-R-A-Y. And also, if you want to check out some of my city tours in places throughout Africa, Europe, uh, the Caribbean islands, you can uh, follow me at Travel Connect. Again, that's Travel Connect. OK, perfect. Uh, we're going to instruct all our listeners to go there and then also in our posts and our um, flyers, we'll have that in there as well. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> Take it easy uh, and look forward to your next trip. All right, I appreciate it. It was fun.